I'm happy to say that Hossam El Hamalawi can now hear us. He's a journalist and political activist in Egypt, and he joins us live from Cairo. I was trying to find out from you what sort of impact seeing your former president behind bars has had on Egypt. Um, uh, no words can describe uh, how uh, um, happy we all are to see the dictator who has ruled us with torture chambers since 1981 to finally um, uh, be behind bars uh, publicly in front of everybody where he answers for his crimes. Uh, we're also happy to see definitely his uh, torturer-in-chief, as we call him, Habib al-Adli, our former interior minister, to be also standing behind bars. But we understand a couple of things. One is that this would not have happened or would not have been possible without our uh, uh, pressures from below uh, via our sit-in in Tahrir Square, via our protests in the streets. Uh, secondly, we understand also there are still regime figures who are uh, on the loose and they are free men while they should belong to the same cage. Like, for example, Omar Suleiman, our former spy chief. And has this restored in your mind the, the, the credibility of the military? Well, the, in, in, if you want to talk about me personally, of course not. I never had any trust in the military to start with, unlike other uh, protesters here in Egypt. And we understand that the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces, who are Mubarak's appointed generals at the end of the day, would not, has, uh, would not have taken this move uh, if it wasn't for our street pressure. But ma'am, as I'm talking to you now, outside the studio, in the streets, we are being surrounded by military police armored vehicles. We are surrounded by uh, uh, tons of central security forces. This is the Interior Ministry's army, who okay. are today in the square to make sure that no more protests happen. Okay, so, Hassan. I'm of afraid, course, we cannot trust them. I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. We'll certainly be keeping an eye on the situation on the streets.